In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. So you are all welcome to the table of plenty. And also for those who are new in the parish or visiting today, feel most welcome. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love of the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they have to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to great, greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I, I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you. Create a clean heart in me, O oh God. The, the human heart stuck on itself is not clean. Clean is open, open to the possibility of love. And the human heart that is focused all on its own way, all on not only getting my way, but being in control of me and possibly of you. That is not a clean heart. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. This is the covenant that I will make after those days. I will place my law within them, writing it on their hearts. A 
heart that is cluttered with our selfishness cannot pick up what the Lord would write there. Well, we heard the parable in the gospel of a single grain of wheat. I would like to offer a companion parable. Once upon a time, there was a grain of wheat that spent happy days in the barn. Sheltered from the cold and humidity, it lounged in perfect contentment among its little friends, the other grains of wheat, happiness, a pure a state of pure well-being. From time to time, among the grains of wheat, they talked about the great adventures of their lives, terrible storms, storm clouds torn by lightning, hailstones. The neighboring alfalfa field was destroyed and completely ravaged, while they, the wheat in the field, bowed their heads to the wind and then stood up just as the rainbow appeared. Our little grain of wheat was pious. It sang songs, not boring songs, but new songs and even some psalms. Oh, how good, how sweet for the brothers and sisters to dwell together with the other grains of wheat. And it said, thank you, Lord, for keeping me warm like this from winter snow for protecting me from the rain. Thank you also for sending us the big cat, Felix, from time to time to prevent the little mice from devouring us. I'm so happy here in the barn that I would like to live here forever and ever, amen. Every now and then the farmer would go up to the barn and look proudly at his store of wheat and then he would come out smiling. One could hear him say, now that's grain. And the little grain of wheat was happy at the level of those who know nothing of any future for them. The happiness of the barn. It happened that one day the happiness of the grain of wheat ran out. Without a word of explanation, the little grain was carried out of the barn with its companions and put in a cart behind the tractor. It crossed the field wet with dew, and there they were thrown on the cold, dark, cultivated ground and finally covered with soil. As the little grain began to decompose, it cried and said, if God existed, such things would never happen. But God's existence and God's faithfulness to our nature is the very reason for these things to happen. Jesus, our Lord, comments, I assure you that unless a grain of wheat into the earth and dies, decomposes, it remains alone. But if it dies, you know what happens. It bears much fruit. The happiness of the barn is the happiness of a child. If we pray to keep God, we pray God to keep us in this happiness, who could wonder why? But if we pray that God grants only this form of happiness, the happiness of childhood, we are making happiness an idol and God an illusion. A grain of wheat alone has practically no value. 
a grain of wheat that is not planted, nor made with millions of other grains into flour for bread, this grain of wheat has no value. In the same way, human persons who try to save themselves from the difficulties of loving others, of serving others in love, hide their great value and diminish their life and lose their future. But if I let my attentions, my talents, my energies be invested in the good of others, just as the Son of God, the man Jesus Christ did, my value is multiplied, my life is magnified, my future is realized. Every time we gather, you and I, around the altar of Christ, we unite with him in deliberate acceptance of our human nature and the necessity of reducing our ego to develop our human life and at the same time to form the family of God.